Because the blockchain is open source and can be seen by anyone, it is possible to see what price everyone paid for their Bitcoin holdings. When Bitcoin prices are up over 120% for the year, the vast majority of holders are in profit. Another Bitcoin president? El Salvador became the first Bitcoin nation in June 2021 due to its innovative president, Nayib Bukali. We may now be looking at a second Bitcoin nation in Latin America. The new president of Argentina is an economist with some revolutionary ideas, including cryptocurrency. New Argentinian president Javier Gerardo Malay has promised to cut spending, reduce the size of government and eliminate the country's central bank. Rothschild fans know that central banks can exert more control over a nation than its own government. Currently, only 10 nations out of 192 do not have a central bank. As these 10 small non-central bank nations only represent 4.5 million people in total, or half of 1% of the world population, it's arguable whether the Rothschild banks even care about them. Argentina, however, has a population of 45 million, 10 times as many people as the combined 10 unbanked small nations. Argentina could thus be represented as being the same size as 100 tiny nations. Argentinians collectively hold 10% of all the USD in circulation in the world. This is the kind of math that could make the IMF and central bankers take notice. World-watching analysts suggest that if Argentina follows El Salvador into embracing cryptocurrency and ousting its central bank, that would mean another 200 million people escaping what President Millet called the central bank scam. A few million people here and a few million people there, and suddenly you have a quarter of a billion people escaping the central banks. How do revolutions start? First slowly, then very quickly. Watch this space. Australia plans to impose capital gains tax on wrapped crypto. This is basically when an asset, Bitcoin, is wrapped in a layer of another, Ethereum, so that it can be sent on another blockchain. Even though the wrapped Bitcoin could be seen as being sent, not bought or sold, the Australian Tax Office has a different interpretation. The ATO consider that one asset is disposed of and another created, so they say it's a taxable event. German parliamentary member Joanna Qatar has called for Bitcoin to become legal tender in her country. She makes some great points about having sufficient crypto regulation to reduce money laundering, while being free to maintain innovation. Ms. Qatar not only embraces Bitcoin, but she's also decidedly against a central bank digital euro. For those playing at home, the population of Germany is around 90 million, or two Argentinas. Imagine the implications if a handful of European nations say yes to crypto and no to a digital euro. Could that lead to the eventual end of the Rothschild central banks, the IMF and the WF? Feel free to join the discussion on Twitter, Facebook, or drop us a line with your thoughts. Bin up, bin down. In November, Chengpeng Zhao, also known as CZ, the boss of Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, agreed to step down as CEO and pay around $4 billion in fines. CZ was accused of not reporting suspicious transactions, which may or may not have been Binance clients using the exchange for money laundering or terrorist activity. Whilst crypto haters applaud the news, we must remind the general population that accusations of money laundering are not exclusive to crypto. From 2015 to 2018, the Commonwealth Bank of Australia took in several large transactions and failed to report them to Austrac, also known as the Bank Police. How many times did ComBank engage in law-breaking on a grand scale, the court asked? Oh, it was just 53,506 times. The ComBank was fined $700 million, or around 6% of their annual profit. Then there was the Westpac Bank, which also engaged in money laundering. Westpac was fined $1.3 billion, the largest corporate fine in history at the time. Next time you hear someone saying that crypto is used for money laundering or criminal activity, gently remind them that so are all the banks. A couple of bad actors are not reasons to avoid crypto. Not all crypto exchanges or currency tokens are bad, so quit the prejudice and stay informed. 
The SEC failed to protect investors from FTX and instead spent their effort going after decent and complying exchanges like Coinbase and Kraken, who never lost a dollar of user funds. When the SEC witch-hunted Coinbase last year, the stock dropped massively. We bought it at a discount because we still believed in the project. Now, Coinbase stock is over 225% year-to-date. It may take time, but the good guys will come out on top. Hang in there. If you're sad about Binance, know that the company is still in business and there are some funny memes around to make you smile, like this one or this one, links below. The short video clips brought some thunderous laughter around the Boston coin office during an otherwise difficult time. Shut up and don't take my money. Whilst we're on the topic of Janet Yellen talking funny, maybe it's time to press mute on this guy. The infamous Shark Tank swindler who promoted FTX and SBF is now endorsing another dodgy crypto exchange. Kevin O'Leary, who we now call Mr. Questionable, was paid large amounts of money to endorse FTX during the time that its CEO was literally stealing investors' money and before the company went super duper bankrupt. Most smiling celebrities are famous for being pretty or athletic. They did not know that SBF's girlfriend kept no less than seven sets of books on the company to try and disguise the embezzlement. But Kevin purports to be some kind of financial and business whiz, so perhaps he should have looked at the books before he was saying how great FTX was. It is some kind of karma to know that O'Leary lost almost all of the $15 million he was paid to advertise FTX, and we will not feel sad to know that he lost his ill-gotten gains. More recently, O'Leary has been advertising a new exchange with some bold claims. First, O'Leary said that the new M2 crypto exchange was going to dethrone Binance, or is it Binance? As Binance is world number one, that's a big task. Secondly, M2 claims to be based in Abu Dhabi. Nope, they're in the Bahamas, the same place where SPF was hiding out before being arrested and sent to prison. Thirdly, the M2 exchange offers unbelievable returns such as 11% on stablecoin USDT and 10% on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Before FTX and Celsius went bankrupt, they also claimed to pay high returns for those who lent them crypto, but the returns were not as high as the claims. Let's be clear, the bank can afford to pay you 4% on your cash savings because they're charging someone else 6% or more for their mortgage. To pay out 10 or 11% for investors, M2 would have to be charging interest rates of 20 or 30% to someone else. Who would be paying those high rates? Our guesses would be either one, nobody, or two, someone who's at very high risk of default. In any case, tread carefully when someone is offering returns that are unmatched in the entire industry. Finally, remember that when everything is on the blockchain, everyone can see it and verify it. When O'Leary claims that M2 is on the tail of beating Binance, we can analyse the on-chain data and see that even if M2 was a thousand times larger than it currently is, it's still not even 1% of Binance's trade figures. If you cannot back up anything you are saying with even one fact, maybe it's time to shush. How did we go this month? Boston Coin. Assemble Protocol up 555%, Solana up 492%, Chainlink up 207%. In 2022, many of our competitors shut down as they did not have the strength or integrity to last in a bear market. We look forward to the next few years when many new competitors will emerge, making things very interesting. Dartcoin. Thorchain is up 1922% since we bought it and is up 523% for the year. It's time for us to take some profits and rebalance for safety while holding some room for future gains. Our investment in Render is up 712% for the year. Render was first profiled on Krillionaire.com in July 2023 when it was around 50 cents.